Well, it's sunrise on Easter morning, and since we can't be together at the tomb, we decided to bring the tomb and its encouraging message of hope to you. Jesus' crucifixion on Friday brought a dark spirit of despair and hopelessness to his followers. You see, his death was more than merely the death of a good friend. It was the death of their Lord and Savior. And so when Jesus died, all their hopes and dreams died too. Late Friday afternoon, Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body down from the cross and prepared it for burial. Then, just before sundown, which marked the beginning of the Sabbath, Joseph placed Jesus' lifely body in his own family tomb. Soldiers were posted at the tomb because the religious leaders were afraid that Jesus' followers might attempt to take his body. Night settled in and dark Friday came to a close. Saturday, being Sabbath, was usually an occasion for rest and celebration. However, with the light of the world now gone, Jesus' followers were beside themselves with profound grief, confusion, and deep sorrow. But their despair would soon be replaced by unbridled joy as they discover the truth that we all know and celebrate. And what's that truth? It is the glorious reality that He is risen. Say it with me. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The announcement made by the angel at the tomb on that first Easter morning is a message of hope and promise. The angel declared in Matthew 28 verses 5 and 6, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. This announcement cut through the shadowy darkness with blazing words of light. And it is this same good news that assures us that the one who went to the cross on our behalf defeated sin's curse and came through death victorious. Jesus' resurrection is God's divine declaration to all the world that his son's death on a cross was not a misfortunate tragedy. It was a triumphant victory. In our brief time here this morning, we will consider the angel's announcement and reflect on three great truths that it proclaims. First, the message from the angel proclaims good news of peace. Fear gripped the hearts of the women who went to the tomb early on Sunday. They had been certain that Jesus was the Messiah and they had devoted their lives to follow him. However, they saw with their own eyes Jesus die and they had watched his lifeless body get sealed inside a tomb of stone. So early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, these women came back to the tomb just to be near him. However, when they got there, they were shocked to discover that the stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body was gone. They assumed his body had been taken, perhaps taken to be desecrated even more by those who had crucified him. All of this shook the women with fear and shock. However, the angel's first words that morning were specifically intended to instill peace to their troubled hearts. He said to them, do not be afraid. These words echoed Jesus' comforting words from just a few days earlier. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Friends, Jesus' resurrection means that we have no reason to fear. We serve a risen Savior who is very much alive. And because he is alive, he meets us in our distresses and fears, and he provides us the peace we desperately need. The peace that is available through our resurrected Lord is not only peace with God, it is the peace of God. Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, is alive to give his peace to troubled hearts. So the message from the angel proclaims good news of peace, but that's not all. Secondly, the message from the angel proclaims good news of victory. After the angel assured the women of peace, he said, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen as he said. You see, the angel knew that the women at the tomb were looking for Jesus' dead body. He said, I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. By mentioning Jesus' crucifixion, the angel underscored our Savior's violent death on Friday. He had been dead part of Friday, all of Saturday, and now part of Sunday. However, on the third day, after Jesus' death, the angel proclaimed, He is not here, for He has risen as He said. The good news that He has risen proclaims that the Lord of life defeated death and is very much alive. But the angel was not merely announcing Jesus' resurrection. He was announcing that His victory over the grave should have been something that was expected. You see, Jesus had risen as he said. In his final days with his disciples, Jesus repeatedly told them that he would be crucified. However, he also assured them that he would then be raised. There is no greater proof that Jesus is God than the fact that his resurrection occurred just as he said. You see, only God can conquer death. And Jesus clearly proved beyond all doubt that he is God by his victory over death through his resurrection. In Romans 1.4, the Apostle Paul stated that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus' resurrection guarantees that everything that he promised is certain. It assures us that our salvation has been secured and our future with him in heaven is sure. It is this great truth that led the Apostle Peter to exclaim, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to what? To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, and kept in heaven for you. The fact that Jesus has risen as he said means that because he was victorious over death, that he is alive to grant eternal life to all who believe. You see, friends, Jesus' resurrection, his victory over death, became our victory over death, our future resurrection. The message from the angel proclaims good news of peace and good news of victory. But there's a third truth found in the angel's words. The message from the angel proclaims good news of assurance. At the end of verse 6, the angel extended an invitation to the women. He said, come, see the place where he lay. The invitation to look into the tomb and see where Jesus' body had previously been was intended to provide evidence 
of Jesus' resurrection to these first eyewitnesses. The empty tomb was actual proof that death could not hold the one who himself is the resurrection and the life. The evidence was staring them in the face. The tomb where Jesus' lifeless body had been lying for three days was now empty. Jesus said he would be raised on the third day and the empty tomb assured these first witnesses that he did precisely what he had promised. The empty tomb assures us that what Jesus says can be trusted. He had promised that he was going to the Father's house to prepare a place for us to be with him. And the empty tomb assures us that he is alive to now receive us to himself. Our faith is not anchored in speculation or wishful thinking. It is grounded in rock solid certainty. Jesus' resurrection is a verifiable fact. He was not only crucified for our sins, he was raised for our justification. Because he has risen, we now have peace with God, victory over death, and the assurance of eternal life. Take the message of the angel to heart today. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful for Jesus. We're so grateful that death could not hold him, the grave could not conceal him, that he is risen. And because he is risen, we have peace, the assurance of victory, and the confidence of eternal life. Bless our church body on this particular Resurrection Sunday when we can't be together. May you be glorified in our times of worship. It's in your name we pray. Amen.